John Knowles here with some variations on some fingerstyle rhythms that we all use to back up singers, to back up instrumentalists, and maybe even write instrumentals of our own. Now here's my starting point, this one. I'm using my A7 chord. I'm going to do the same chord, but put my fingers in a different sequence, but still eight eighth notes. Alright, let's break it down. What I'm doing there is I'm doing my thumb, index, ring and middle as a pair, and then index. And then again, thumb, index, pair, index. And when you spread that across four beats, it's like one and two and three and four and. So the thumb always falls on one and three, what we call the strong beats. And then the pair of fingers always falls on two and four, the back beats. And the index finger always falls between the beats. Very predictable. Now for my variation, I'm going to change the way I'm using my fingers. I'm going to have thumb, index, ring, and middle. And now that's a group of three. Instead of my thumb, index, ring, and middle, index, which was a group of four. So now I'm going to have thumb, index, pair, thumb, index, pair, thumb, index, oops, I just ran out of eighth notes. This pair would show up in the next measure. So what if I leave something out? What if in that middle group of three I left index out? So now it would be thumb, index, pair, thumb, pair, thumb, index, pair. Now it counts like this. One and two and three and four and and it sounds like this so now that I can do it I'm gonna practice counting one and two and while I play the guitar so that my brain is engaged as well as my hands later on my brain will disengage but I want to know what I'm doing so that I can add even more variations so one and two Well, there's not much call for a guitar player who stays on A7 all the time, so we can use that A7 for this pattern. And then there's a version of D7 that I picked up in Kentucky where the F sharp is in the bottom. It's the same D7 that we play when we play it the Mel Bay way, but the Kentucky way you move over to the sixth string for that F sharp. And then when you go to E7, One thing I enjoy about explaining something to somebody else is it ends up giving me an idea I hadn't even thought of before. Here's one that I came up with just now. I'm going to go back to the A chord and I'm going to remember that there's a G underneath my pinky here and now I would have an A7 that's fingered this way. And what I can do is sometimes leave my pinky up and sometimes down, so I would have. Ooh, it's getting more interesting, isn't it? What if I even let my thumb cross over and play the fourth string along with my index finger? So here's what that would sound like. So my thumb is on the fifth string, index, ring and middle, just like we thought. Now my thumb is gonna play that G on the fourth string, there's my pair, and now what I'm going to do is open that up and play thumb, index, middle. And I didn't change strings, I stayed on that fourth string for two notes. Here's what that one sounds like. Ooh, now we're talking. Now if you get to where you can sing and do that at the same time, you're hired. So for extra credit, get out there on YouTube and search for Jerry Reed playing the claw or playing and singing the Wabash Cannonball. Or maybe find Mason Williams playing classical gas. He's got that idea in here. 
or uh, Chad Atkins playing the Tiger Rag. There's so many great examples of how to work this three against four kind of thing. Well, I hope you'll have a good time teaching your fingers uh, to enjoy this lesson. And remember, if you steal a lick, you get a lick. But if you steal an idea, you get a whole handful of licks. See you out there.